welcome to a special 2020 Black Tuesday box episode of... Brutal Battle. So there was some debate on what we would call this episode, because it's kind of a bunch of things. It's a Brewery Society beers episode, because it's versions of Black Tuesday. It's a variants episode, because it's variants of Black Tuesday. But we figured out, or I figured, I would really like to make it its own thing, because it's appearing like it's going to be a reoccurring thing every year. So we did one for the 2019 box that ended up coming out. So now we're going to go ahead and do one for the 2020, and then hopefully we'll do one for the 2021 and 2022 and just keep going. And so on and so on and so on. Yes. So if people don't know, uh, it's very, very limited, and I don't think it ever makes it to the public, but there have been the, the celebration boxes of Black Tuesday by the brewery, where they take uh, a few variants that have been ones that have been popular that they've tested out with society members, and they bottle them up in seven, in, sorry, not 750 milliliter, 375 milliliter bottles and have them out in 12 packs. So it's four different flavors or four different variants of Black Tuesday, three of each in this box. So what I've done, because it's expensive, is I split it three ways with, with two other people to make it more affordable. So you get to try the beers, but not spend a crazy amount on it. But the thing that sucks about that is when you then have one that you think is particularly amazing, that's it. That's it. <laughs> You're done. So um, obviously we're breaking this episode up because it's like a 19% beer. Even though it's 375 milliliters, we could probably do two bottles at a time. Yeah, but we don't want to push it. Yeah, we don't want to push it, but we also don't want to just blow our wad on it all at once because we want to take our time with these beers. They're expensive and they're beers that take a lot of time. So they're supposed to be very special. We want to treat them like they're special. So we're filming the, or filming this. Oh <laughs> we're recording this in four chunks and we'll just edit it together. So the first one we're going to go with is the one we're least excited about, but still excited about. And what is that, Rebecca? This one's called Sweet Magnolias. It's an imperial stout aged in bourbon barrels with bananas, Madagascar vanilla beans, and Nella wafers. And it is, oh, only 18.1%. Oh, this one's lower. Well, that's surprising. <laughs> I like that. So for me, the reason this one sounds like the least interesting is because banana in it. And I, I don't like banana or banana flavor in stuff. I just like bananas. And every now and then I like banana bread, but that's where my banana interest ends. Yeah. So hopefully I still like it, but kind of the same way. I don't, I like banana more than Carlin does, but I don't like banana and beer. Yeah. Which there was, oh, okay. Royal street sweets. That was a beer that in a 16 ounce can that I had on a brewery society beers episode that actually the banana wasn't bad. It actually yeah. kind of worked in I there. Mean, so I have, hopes that even though I don't like banana and beer, that this could work because it's the brewery and they yeah. get all kinds of crazy shit to work. And they know what they're doing hardcore. So, yeah. All right. So, pouring on a little bit and let's... I mean, it's going to look like what you would assume, I assume. Yeah. It so looks like a go. stout. What does it look like? Yeah. It looks like a stout. There's not much of any head to it, as you would assume, being like 18% alcohol. Yeah. Super dark looking. Yep. No head. Swirling it up. Very significant legs really stick into the side because of that high ABV. And you yeah. get the banana in the nose. Jesus. You get a lot a lot of banana. I get the vanilla, though, too. Yeah, I get the banana. I get the vanilla. And I'm getting, like, a caramel. Maybe that comes from the vanilla wafers. Maybe. Have, I mean, yeah. it could be the bourbon barrels. Have you ever had bananas with, like... Um, brown sugar on them that's kind of like brulee like yeah, a banana uh, like bananas foster. foster yeah it kind of smells a little yeah. bit like that and I, I think that might be what this is kind of modeled after mm -hmm. is it like a bananas foster it smells good yeah it actually does i gotta i gotta hand it to it it's mainly the banana then that vanilla then that carameliness at the end which actually some of that carameliness could be coming from the bourbon character i just said that oh sorry i missed that <laughs> I'm sorry, I was so like You were like surprised and I was distracted. like it's probably from the bourbon barrels. Yeah, sorry about that. I was very surprised and distracted. But yes, by the that caramel banana. could be from the bourbon barrels. Definitely. But it also 
It also could just be from the malt. Yeah. Who knows? But it's there. It smells really good. It smells like really complex and layered, lots of different flavors. Um, The banana is like a good banana and not like a gross banana. Yeah. It doesn't smell like artificial banana so much. It could be artificial banana, but it doesn't smell like that. Oh, actually, how do they... They say, oh, with bananas, so actual bananas. It's not banana flavoring then. That's what they do. They have, there's a differentiation in the way they name things, ingredients on their bottles. If it says banana, it's flavoring. If it says bananas, it's the actual fruit. It's really good. Oh my gosh. It is. Like you get the banana. And then it goes away, kind of. It, 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 it's not really, really strong. It's a subtle banana. It's more on, you get way more banana on the nose than you do in the flavor. Correct. Um, but it's really good. It's like really soft and delicate, even wow. though it is such a big beer. Wow. Yeah, actually, banana is the first thing I taste when I go in. It's it's a strong first flavor. And then it starts going to the vanilla, vanilla. and that caramel that you're talking yeah. about. And then finishing with like a, a little bit of a boozy bourbon hit. Yeah. And that's kind of the flavor journey. And I love that because you're getting the banana and it's going well with everything. But then the banana's kind of, it's gone. Like, every flavor gets its turn. Yeah. And the the progression of how those flavors happen is probably the best possible progression. I love when you take a sip of beer and you get that flavor pro- progression. It's always so yeah. fun. You know? Because yeah. it's like not every sip is like the exact same stagnant sip. It's just like... A roller coaster of flavors. True. Uh, yeah, I totally agree with that. And one of the things about that is that you can then choose to focus when you're taking each sip on which part of it you really right. want to. You know, like you're always going to get all of it if you're open to it. But each time you take a sip, if you're like, I really want to focus on the banana, you can just each time you sip, you're like, there's the banana, there's the right. banana. Or each time you'd be like, I want to focus on the banana this time. There it is. I want to focus on the caramel this time. Oh, there it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, yeah. Wow. I was, uh, I wasn't expecting it to be this good. Yeah, it's really good. I did have high hopes that it would be good because it's the brewery, like we were talking about, but. And it made it to the box. <laughs> well, yeah, that too. But it's, I'm, my mind's kind of blown with mm-hmm. how good this actually is because the description doesn't sound so hot to me. So, hmm, wow. Okay, well, if this was the beer we were least excited about, I hope all the beers are as good or better yeah. than this. Uh, yeah, but I guess we'll find out when we go to the second beer. And this one sets us up with higher expectations than we had for the first one, so maybe in comparison we're not going to be as pleasantly yeah. surprised, because the way this one sounds versus the first one yeah, this oh sounds my gosh. better. So this one is Love at Midnight, and it is Imperial Stout aged in bourbon barrels with pineapple, coconut, and vanilla added, and it is a even 18%. Okay. So let's I'm I'm this is so two of the beers in the box, I was like, when I heard of them, I was like, eh, not that psyched about. One being that sweet Banana. magnolias we just had. Um but the other two, I was like, oh my gosh, like very excited about those. So this is one of those very excited about beers. So hopefully it delivers. All right, Rebecca, go ahead. What does it yeah, look like this looks, first one? It looks dark. I guess we don't really need to talk about yeah. it. looks so much. They're probably all going to look exactly the same, but. Oh man, it's really coconutty. It looks a little bit thinner when I swirl it, I feel like. Like, it's coming down the side of the glass faster than the last one. So, I don't know. Okay. It's very coconutty. There's no head to it at all. Very pineapple. You get the pineapple, you get the coconut. Yeah. And and it's chocolatey, too. Mm -hmm. It's very chocolatey as well. And and vanilla, right? You said vanilla's in there? Yeah. I'm getting the vanilla. Yeah, I get the vanilla as well. I wasn't expecting to have the level of, like, that milky chocolate that I'm getting out of it. But that's a nice addition. It is reminding me a little bit of that f- spicy island, the oh. um, the Black Tuesday from last year's box that was the uh, pineapple habanero. Because yeah. 
that that beautiful pineapple smell is very similar in this, and that also had a significant chocolate to it, and this one does as well. So I'm getting that same note, and then it's like with some vanilla added. And are you getting coconut? Yeah, I'm definitely getting coconut. Yeah. Okay. I just couldn't remember. I had to go back and sniff. Yes, coconut as well. I feel like I'm getting more coconut than pineapple. I mean, based off how this smells, it could end up being better for us personally than the Spicy Island. And we loved that Spicy yeah. Island. So, yeah. But it smells very nice, very nuanced, flavorful. Oh, it tastes... You get a lot of the coconut and you get a lot mm. of the pineapple. Oh, wow. And you get... Yeah, you definitely get the vanilla and you get the cho- and you get chocolate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's interesting because I feel like it finishes vanilla... Yes. It, it, But I don't get the vanilla until that point. It's like, no vanilla, no vanilla. Oh, there's vanilla, and it hits kind of, like, strong in the end. I would never guess this is 18%. Mm. No. Oh, hell no. I 10? I was going to say maybe? 10. Yeah. It's very smooth. It's very flavorful. It's got a decent body to it. I mean, I'm getting the burning in the back of my throat now. It's got a decent body to it, but it's not as... Viscous as you would think at 18%, or for being an Imperial Stout, really. Hmm. Spear's dangerous. Yeah. It's very dangerous. I think that, for me, the chocolate is the most um, prominent flavor throughout, because it sustains all oh, the way see, through. I think it's coconut. So for me, it sustains all the way through, and... The coconut's good, and that's one of the big achievements. Like, we talk all the time on the podcast, beers say they have coconut in them, yeah. we try them, we're like, where the hell's the coconut? You know, you definitely get the coconut in this, and that's nice. And I do feel like the coconut also sustains, and it's kind of like an accent to the relatively strong chocolate throughout each sip. It just kind of, like, hangs around with the chocolate, and it's pretty nice. The pineapple, to me hits more up front and then kind of goes away. Mm -hmm. And then it's just the chocolate and the coconut. And then I get that pow at the end of that vanilla mixed with a little bit of like a caramel, in my opinion, which I assume is coming from the bourbon. It reminds me a little bit of an Almond Joy. But with With pineapple. pineapple. But just because the coconut's more so, and chocolate and vanilla are so pronounced. There's a nice roastiness in there as well. That's almost, it's almost giving me, I mean, it is giving me like a very low level kind of coffee in there as well. It's good. Very low. I think it's good. Yeah, this is really nice. And once again, the fact that I'm getting the coconut Mm -hmm. is an accomplishment. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, this beer, this is a very nice beer. This is a great dessert beer. I would love to have this beer. I do like this more than the last one, even though the last one was very good. Agreed. Oh, man. Okay, so this did not disappoint. No. Thank goodness, because we had high hopes for this one. Very, very nice. Yeah, I really dig this. Cool. So, uh, hopefully, we go three for three. Let's go three for three, but we'll find right out with uh, beer number three. And this is the other one from the box that I wasn't that excited about, and people who know me and know my taste have listened to enough of this podcast to know that stuff will know why when I tell you what it is. Uh, this one is called You Want a Piece of Me with an with a question mark. And I would assume the answer is yes for this beer because hopefully <laughs> it's very good. Um, it is an imperial stout aged in bourbon and maple syrup barrels with pecans and maple syrup. And it's 18.5%. Now, I'm not big on maple flavors. I, I, but that said... I do really, for some reason, like the brewery's Vermont Sticky Maple, which is a bourbon barrel-aged imperial stout with Vermont maple syrup added to it. So I bet you're going to like this. Yeah, so what I'm hoping is that, I'm still like apprehensive about it, but what I'm hoping is it's like a even better, even more decadent version of the Vermont Sticky Maple in a way. That's what I hope for, but at the same time, I also don't have high hopes. I don't know. I'm trying to temper expectations, but also yeah. be optimistic in a way, if that makes any sense. But. It's hard when when you hear what's in a beer because, like, sometimes you have then like preconceived expectations oh, yeah. and oh yeah, 
And sometimes you you build it up to be better than it is, or it doesn't live up to your expectations. And well, the other thing about this is that um, pecans, like a lot of the time when there's any sort of nut, we're not really getting it. Yeah. Like I, I actually, I'm asking this question because I actually don't remember. But when we had last year's Black Tuesday box, the pistachio vanilla. Didn't we not really get the vanilla in that? Or, I mean, the pistachio in that? It was mainly just, like, chocolate and vanilla, and it was wonderful. But I'm thinking that this could end up being the same thing, where it's like, where's the frickin' pecan? But then again, pecan is a more flavorful, more easy-to-recognize nut than pistachio is, I think. You think? Yeah, I do, because I think, at least for me personally, my relationship with pistachios, (laughs) um, I just you know, associate them with being salty. Oh. You know, like, there's a little bit of a flavor component, but it's usually, like, kind of low. It's just mainly just salty. So, anyway. Okay. It's dark. Yeah. I mean, it looks like the others. <laughs> no head. Was it, is it still looking... Yeah. Pr- looking looking pretty good on the legs on the ends. Or the sides. She's getting the bourbon. Ooh. I, get, I definitely get the maple, but... It is less than I would think. Yeah. It's not very strong. I wish it was more. I'm um, fine with this. Definitely getting vanilla. I'm getting like yeah. the barrel, like the mm-hmm. Yeah, it's wood. It's like a really nice caramelly note yeah. from the bourbon. It's it's a, yeah, like you were saying, it's a lot of bourbon character, which I'm totally good with that. But it does have that accent of the maple in there. Which I think oh, is yeah. I'm adding getting, a sweetness. I'm to definitely it. getting the maple. And it's chocolatey too. Yeah. It's got a nice chocolate note in there. It smells slightly hot alcohol wise, like there's a little bit of a hotness. Um, we'll see about the flavor though. I think it's delicious. It's definitely definitely Whoa. maple. That's a lot of maple, dude. Is it too much for you? Um, it might be, yeah. Really? It's like Maple to the point of being, like, sickly sweet in a oh, way. See, I don't think so. Oh, it's just like... I mean, it's sweet, but I don't <sighs> think it's too much. And I feel like I am getting the pecan. Yeah. And there's also... And this kind of happens when you do some beers with nuts in it. There is this kind of, like, extra mouthfeel to it that's kind of, like, proteiny. Yeah. Because of the nuts having all those proteins that kind of get released into the beer. Yeah. the You know, the more I taste it... Yeah, it's pecan, it's maple. I mean, it's exactly what it's supposed to be. Lots of bourbon, though. The bourbon, like like we were saying, is it's coming through a lot on the nose, but it is coming through a lot in the flavor. Yeah. And I think that's what's kind of probably going to save this for me, is that strong bourbon character with a nice caramel to it, with a nice vanilla, like you were mm-hmm. saying, you're getting a lot, and a, a pretty nice wood. Although the wood, I think, is a little more downplayed in the flavor yeah, than the nose. Definitely. Which, you know, I'd like a little more. I like I like woodiness in my beers, but it is really hot in the back of my throat though. Like there is like I was oh, saying yeah. it smelled like it had a little bit of alcohol heat. It tastes like it has you alcohol tell, heat. Yeah, you definitely can tell that it's boozy. Of Which, the three, it tastes the most boozy. Yes, agreed. For sure. It's the one that tastes closest to its actual A B V, in my opinion. And they're all about the same A B V, right? I think. We'll we'll talk about that at okay. the end. Because since we're chopping this up, we're only having one beer in front of us at a time, not the other bottles. So we'll we'll look at that at the very end. I but forget. It is good. Um for me, I don't I don't like it as much as the Vermont Sticky Maple because the Vermont Sticky Maple I feel like has more like rich chocolate notes to kind of take away some of that sickly sweet maple. For me, personally, it has maple, but it's not super strong. This is super strong maple. Yeah. I mean, I do appreciate that the pecan's there. Like I said, that bourbon character, but there's a lot of maple. This is one that... I like it. This is one that Kyle Norman is going to really like. Oh, yeah. He loves the maple. So he will jizz over this. Well, jizz. Like I said before, I don't know what he does with his beers. (laughs) <laughs> and I don't know, I, I, I can guess what he'll do with this one, because he is getting a bottle of it, so. Yeah, just saying. He'll enjoy it. Yeah. So, for this, I have saved 
what I think will probably be my favorite, hopefully be my favorite of the box. And I'm very, very excited to get into this one. And that's why I saved it for last. And that one is... Liberty Stout Witch, which is an imperial stout aged in bourbon barrels with marshmallows, Tahitian vanilla beans, peanut flour, and salt added. And it is 19.1%. It is the highest ABB of all of these beers. Uh, save the what sounds like the best for last for me personally and could be the best for last as far as getting you messed up. <laughs> uh, especially if it tastes like these other ones where you can't perceive yeah. all that much booze. So, um, the, if you, if you can't pull it out of the description of this beer, it's kind of meant to be like a fluffer nutter version of Black Tuesday, which, does that not sound amazing? It does sound good. That sounds amazing. I'm, oh my god, I'm so excited for this one. This is why I, in, I intentionally saved this one for last, because I wanted to be like, let's cap this off with the one that could be the most decadent, the most delicious... Now watch See, after I, I said all this. After you piped this up, it's not gonna. It's gonna be this. <laughs> it's gonna stinker. be like, oh crap! It didn't come through. Well, but here's the thing. Kind of like I said, like these are like these have been tested before. You know, like the the Black Tuesday box is not beers that they're trialing. It's beers that they have already trialed, and they're ones that people have given them very good feedback on. So, and they've all been good. That's yeah. how the other box was last year as well. So. No head whatsoever. It looks no. super thick. It looks super viscous as it's got a crazy amount of legs on the side. It's dark. Yeah. So. I get the peanut. I get yeah, that peanut. Very faint on the peanut. It's mostly mostly the bourbon barrels. Yeah, there's a lot of bourbon up front, and it's bringing a really nice caramel. But I'm also getting the vanilla in there, too. Now, sometimes it can kind of just fold in with the right. bourbon because you get vanilla from bourbon sometimes. It's hard to tell. Yeah. So, but I get vanilla, I get caramel, I get a bit of a bourbon astringency and just overall bourbon smell. Get the peanut and it smells a little proteiny too because of that. The other thing is with marshmallow, it's vanilla-like. Right. You know, so. I know marshmallow is one of those things that's hard to really pick out. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's vanilla, you know, like, yeah. especially if it has marshmallow and vanilla in it, it's like, what's the marshmallow? What's, what's the, the vanilla? vanilla? It's just kind of runs together. Yeah. It smells good, though. I think it smells excellent. And as I continue to sniff it, I smell even more of that peanut coming through. And I also get a low-level uh, chocolate coming through as well on the, no no the, the nose. So, you took a sip already. I mean, you definitely get the peanut. Ooh. It's hmm. low level, but it it's is. there. I mean, it, it, it tastes exactly how it smells. So the peanut is low level, but I feel like that's really appropriate for how all the flavors are presenting. Yeah. That if you put it higher up, it might start to taste a little weird. You know, like you don't... Mm, I would like it a little higher up. You want it at more... Well, okay, here's the thing. I think it becomes... It's It's... A bit of an accent right now. If you have it higher up, it becomes the focal point. And I don't know if the beer's the best if it's the focal point. Mm -mm. You know what okay. I mean? Sure. Because it's not peanut butter. It's not, right. you know, peanut butter black Tuesday. It's a fluffer nutter. Like, they, they want a lot of yeah. flavors. Are you getting a lot of the vanilla? I get... I don't get a ton. I do get it. And there is... And I'm assuming this is from the peanut flour. There is a, like, protein uh, mouthfeel to it. Like, you, afterwards, you get that kind of, like, peanutty coating in your mouth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which, you know, if you've ever had peanut butter, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I can see that. It's good. It's really boozy. It is really boozy. Um, you can tell that this is definitely the yeah. booziest of them all. And I think... I don't know which one has more between this one and the maple one. Those two, these two, those two have the the highest perception of the booze. Yeah. I think the other two beers did a much better job of covering up the high ABVs, but this is still quite tasty. I really do enjoy it. It's good. It is good. You do get a lot of bourbon though. It really does lead with the bourbon. The bourbon's very, very, very. 
prominent caramel oakiness. I do get some of the oakiness in there. And there's a little bit of a chocolate coming through in the finish as well. It's good. But yeah, this is definitely one that isn't dangerous because when you sip it, it, it yeah, lets you, you know tell. it's like, you're just like, oh yeah, I have to take it slow on this. Yeah. There is that alcohol burn. It's a little astringent. Okay. All right. So that's it. That's all. I, I'm sad. I know. I've had so much fun going through and doing all these four, but, um, you know, there will be more Black Tuesdays. Hopefully every year they'll keep doing the yeah, box. Yeah, it's fun. I think it's super awesome, especially because... They're in 375 milliliter bottles. We don't need 750 milliliter Black Tuesdays. Either the 375s are good or 16 ounce cans. Like, that's what I'm all in for. So, uh, okay. So much more manageable. So, final ranking of these. Rebecca, would you like to go first? Sure. My number four is going to be You Want a Piece of Me, which is the Imperial Stout Aged in Bourbon Barrels with Maple Syrup. And maple syrup barrels with pecans and maple syrup. Mm-hmm. My number three is this one, which is the Liberty Stout Witch. The Imperial Stout aged in bourbon barrels with marshmallows, Tahitian vanilla beans, peanut flour, and salt added. My number two is the Sweet Magnolias, which is the Imperial Stout aged in bourbon barrels with bananas, Madagascar vanilla beans, and Nilla wafers. And my number one... Is the Imperial Stout aged in bourbon barrels with pineapple, coconut, and vanilla. And my lineup is the same. Oh, really? Yeah. 100% same ranking, which... if I'm you t- surprised by that. Well, and I'm surprised, too, because, like I said, like going into it, there were ones I was excited about. There were ones I wasn't excited about. I never would have thought going into it that that one with the bananas would be my second. Yeah, it's really good. That I mean, I, really good. I definitely could have seen the the one with the pineapple and coconut being number one, especially after last year having had the spicy island yeah. with the pineapple and habanero, which, by the way, is better than this love at midnight. That that spicy island is better, in my opinion. But this still is quite good. So, um, yeah, and the the fluffernarder one, it is like we're saying, it is good. It's good. I think if the booze was a little bit lower, yeah, I would I'd like it more. Agreed. And then also, yeah, I'd like some more vanilla coming through with it because that would give it more of like a marshmallow to mm-hmm. it. And I mean, they could they could kick the peanut up a bit. Yeah, I think they, they could. I, I think kick up the peanut and kick up the vanilla. Yeah, yeah, I could get down with that. But I'm going to have a very good time finishing this off with you because yeah. it's very nice. So anyway, there may be. At some point, a variance episode, there will be at some point, but it's going to take a while to figure out when, a variance episode of Black Tuesdays. Not not one of these special box variants one, it's just like other variants that we just happen to have, and I want to start with like a regular Black Tuesday, and then I have a bunch of different Black Tuesdays, mainly with, you know, different barrels or different lengths of time in the barrel or in a barrel with, like, one other ingredient, basically. Okay. So, um, different than this, but still should be fun. But the problem is, most of them are 750 yeah. milliliter bottles. <laughs> I think I think all of them are except, like, one, and I think it's, like, six or seven bottles. Wow. It's a lot. So, we'll see when we get around to that one, but, <laughs> yeah. So, um, once again... Follow us on Instagram. That's the big place to follow us because Rebecca's very um, active with that. And it is Brutal Battle Podcast. And do us the favor of giving us ratings and reviews, but do us the biggest favor of telling people about the podcast, whether it's online or in person or over the phone or however you want to do it. That is the best way to spread the word if you like what you hear. That's your that's a good way to repay us. But this has been fun. We thank everyone for listening. And until next time, keep it brutal. I feel so-